What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna show you the four different teams I am using in the Broken Land in order to clear a lot of towers super easy. Of course you have some limited heroes and many exclusives inside of the teams but you are gonna have the spirit of the teams and you can replicate that at your level. It's okay if you can't clear all the content the first day or the second day. Over time you're gonna acquire more buffs and then you are gonna be able to use the similar kind of teams without limited heroes. Uh, so let's let me show you, this is the second day and now I was able to get 4 towers level 10 directly today. Yesterday on the first day, in order to push the towers and to uh, access the boss uh, really early, I managed to beat 4 towers level 8 with a few buffs on my teams. So this is, I'm gonna just show you the 4 teams I am using and try to comment them so you are gonna see how does they work and uh, some details about the team. So let's just start with the first one. So this is the first team and probably the more efficient one. Inside of it you have Nicolas, of course. This is the most efficient one because Nicolas is in, inside of the team. With the exclusive 2 he's gonna be able to perma-freeze enemies as you can see on the screen and lower their speed, increase your own speed. This is the best hero for this kind of content for the Broken Land. Then you have Ronai. She is also really interesting to control enemies thanks to the Hypnotize or the turn meta reduction on them. The turn to increase all your heroes and then you have two damage dealers and of course you have little jack inside don't worry if you don't have little jack you can put many burner heroes in the team it is still gonna work if you don't have more veal just put instead uh, moloch if you have moloch andras if you have andras and also if you don't have little jack just use Anna instead and thanks to your three burner heroes you are gonna deal the same amount of damage to to the enemy but in this team it's gonna be more efficient because there is more veal to reduce your cooldowns on your heroes and to cleanse just in case you have some dot because yes you can have some dots especially on the last wave of the content. Uh, Little Jack is gonna deal an insane amount of damage and paired to Moloch it's gonna be just super super efficient. You can just inflict deep burn 2 on enemies using the ultimate of Moloch and then your little jack just use the ultimate as often as you can so he can stack the pumpkins and once he's gonna reach the last wave he is gonna deal insane amounts of damage to enemies and even if you have a freak you can still destroy freak thanks to the high damage of little jack even if you do some crits on freak because he can heal a lot when he is taking some crits so Second wave already and as you can see I'm not struggling at all using that team. The core hero to have is just a Nicholas and then you can replace the damage dealers in your team by others. And then it's gonna be, it's gonna be super super easy. So I'm just gonna accelerate it just a bit because this is a video running in background and this is the last wave. So really important, uh, when you reach the last wave sometimes you have a tap and he can be really annoying because he plays he places a poison on all your heroes at the beginning. So it might proc the apple if you have Nicholas, or if it's not the case, you can still use the shield of Nicholas to protect your heroes and you are gonna be safe. Otherwise, you have some heroes such as Morville who can cleanse. If you don't have Morville, you can try to use Guhana instead and she is gonna be able to cleanse also the poison on your heroes. Really interesting. And so the fight goes on and they are gonna die super super easy, super fast and as you can see you are able to control them all, it's super easy this way. And a little Jack now has 7 pumpkins on his head and so his damage are just insane now. No issue at all using that team and even if you have a Greta in front of you, you can still try to freeze Greta or if it's not the case, if you can't freeze her, then don't worry, it's still gonna be doable because you have the apple of, Le of uh, Nicholas if you have the exclusive 3, so uh, she might remove the buffs on one guy on your team, but then you are still gonna be able to act because you are still uh, alive thanks to the apple and you can try to focus on her with Little Jack. 
And now you have the second team I am using. Inside of it, many controls. And I'm using an Epic Hero, Sinov, because she is really interesting for that content. Because thanks to all the pursuits of Ben Austin, she can freeze enemies who are under speed down. And she can place speed minus 20% on enemies and 40% on the ultimate on every enemy at once. And she can freeze them all if they are under speed down. So this is really interesting. She can also lower their turn meta, increase your own turn meta. And in the team, I I am using two different kinds of controls. I have some stuns using Rista on his ultimate and basic attack and on the basic attack of Melkyo I have some stun also and a lot of turn meta reduction on Melkyo's basic attack and so using both pursuits of Rista and Ben Austin it's just gonna be absolutely perfect for this kind of content. Just have, for example, here to focus on Fiona, so she can't play because you can't control Fiona, but with the huge turn meta decrease, she will never play, as you can see on the screen. Then, just have to use the pursuit of Ben Austin on Sinton because he can be annoying if he provokes your heroes and counterattacks your heroes. Nazil is here to control enemies with the freeze, and so normally, I just have enough controls to deal with that content. Look at that. Melchior, really important to use often the first active skill when you can, when you don't need to reduce the turn meta of an enemy because the more you are using the first active skill, the higher his damage during the fight. So really important to do that. And don't use all your controls at once. For example, I'm using, uh, I'm opening with the first active skill of Ben Austin, of uh, Nazil so he can freeze all enemies and I'm not using directly the ultimate of Rista just in case I'm gonna need some controls in AoE. This is really important. If you have a high effect hit on your Ben Austin, you can use the first active skill so you can reduce the turn meta of all enemies and increase their cooldown so just in case they are taking a turn, they might not kill you if you are lucky enough. So. Fiona is dead and as you can see it's taking a lot of time to clear the first wave but then your uh, Melkyo if you used many times the first active skill is gonna have more damage and so the second and the third wave are gonna be way way faster. 80 turns approximately to clear the first wave. So you, you still have more than 200 turns to clear the entire content. On the second wave, you have different heroes. You have a Nazil, but you can freeze Nazil because he doesn't have any exclusive at all. And you have Zyra, she has a lot of resistance to controls, but still if you have a lot of effect hit on your heroes, you shouldn't get in trouble. So just have to cycle your skills as you did on the first wave and you are safe for that. So I'm just going to accelerate it just a bit because we don't care about the second wave. The third one is going to be a bit more difficult because if I remember correctly, there is... Yeah, there is a tuck inside of it and this is why using multiple kind of controls is really important. If you are not using uh, a stun, he is going to cleanse the freeze on all the team in front of you and start uh, applying a shield and controlling your heroes. So this is really important every time to focus on tuck if you want to stun him, if you have the stun. Uh, same comment if you have a Gramdi in front of you, you want to avoid attacking Gramdi, otherwise your heroes are gonna get frozen most of the time, so you just have to uh, use the stuns on Gramdi if there is one. If there is a Greta in front of you, just focus on Greta with your controls and with your turn meta reduction, so uh, over time you are gonna be able to control her and reduce her turn meta, she won't be able to play, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't get in trouble using that team against the Greta then. So that team is working, on the majority of um, of content. If you have in front of you a Taff, uh, it might not work. You are going to use the shield with Sino first, so sh she's going to protect a bit your heroes, but I think this is not going to be enough to resist the two um, procs of the poison. So only against the Taff teams, it might not work. But as you can see, it's pretty efficient so far. So that was the second team, now let's have a look to the third one.
So this is the third team I am using in Broken Land and I love the combination of two heroes inside of it, Asindo and Mamuk. This is just completely broken for this kind of content. Basically, Asindo is gonna silence all enemies and freeze some of them, so it might be interesting when you have some Sintons in front of you. Uh, so enemies won't be able to use their skills and so most of their attacks are gonna be single target. And this is why the combination of Asindo and, and Mamuk is just great because he's gonna taunt enemies and apply immortal on himself enemies are not going to be able to target your other heroes and you will never die using that if you add in the team Lydia it's going to be even better because she can reduce the cooldowns of your skills and so you are going to be able to silence them freeze them with your Resindo depending on the exclusives you have on her and use your skills with Mamuk more often then of course you are going to need a, a nice damage dealer and this is why I'm using Nita here she's going to deal nice damage to enemies and she is just in case she is immune to poison but I have Norodak to protect my heroes from, from taking controls and damage thanks to the uh, damage immunity and the block debuff of the ultimate and I have many shields on my heroes so in fact I'm really tanky with that team I just have to try to control them all and just need to deal some damage and be careful uh, to get my cooldowns when at wave transition Otherwise, it might fail, and this is why it's another manual team. So as you can see, almost cleared the first wave in 60 turns. This is really efficient. It's gonna take a bit more time now because I'm just gonna save my uh, cooldowns for the next wave. Here we are, and we have a Gramdy, but it's okay because you know what? I have Nordak, and so I'm gonna have the block debuff on my heroes. Here, important to focus on Elena and to control her, apply a freeze, otherwise she is gonna use the basic attack and she is gonna uh, just put all her debuffs on one of your hero. So pay attention to that. And then just have to, to protect your guys and cycle your skills as you did on the first wave. And the only attacks you are gonna take are gonna be on your Mamuk. So you are not even forced to use your Nordak in here, but it's safer to use him. So maybe we can try to use Nordak in another team and try to build a fifth one. I'm gonna try that in the future. I'm gonna try that in the future. Because I'm curious to see. Asindo paired to Mamuk is already good enough, so maybe I just don't need to use Nordak inside. If you have... If you still have your, if you don't have Lydia, and if you still have your Morville, you can try to use Morville instead of Lydia. You are gonna lose a bit of damage with Nita, but you are gonna have some cleanses and some uh, cooldown reduction. So, no trouble at all on the second wave. So let's have a look to the third one. Here we are, the third wave. It might be difficult because you have some poisons and some controls with Sinton, so just have to pay attention to what you are doing during the fight. Here, I was provoked with my Asindo, she, can't, she uh, used the basic attack then on Sinton and froze him. Now I have the damage immunity and the block debuff, so the poisons of Walter shouldn't be a threat. Just have to continue like this. And just in case, Elik is protecting uh, Igor, but he has only single target attack, so even if he is not silenced, he's still gonna target my Mamuk. So in fact, the fight is gonna be super easy, and it's taking around 180 turns, so pretty nice. Another easy team. So now let's have a look to the fourth one I am using. So this is my last team and one of the most efficient one for that content of course because you have Dianmu and Indra inside of it so you can reduce a lot of turn meta of enemies and stun them with Dianmu one shot them with Indra and then you have just in case jack and roll that you can replace with another hero for example a focus if you have focus or another turn meta increase in your team you have Quinlan just to apply some extra controls just in case Fiona to control enemies just in case also so, and to cleanse your heroes and you are going to see that it might be interesting especially on the last wave so basically the only thing you have to, to do is to be careful of the turn of enemies of their turn meta 
You don't want them to play, otherwise you are, you might die. And look at that. I, I'm getting control with my Dianmu because I wasn't able to stun Sinton. He counterattacked me and provoked my Dianmu. But thanks to Fiona, I was able to cleanse the control on my Dianmu. And so I am sta I'm, I'm still alive. So just have to continue like this. And you are safe using that team because you have a revival just in case. You have many controls. You have some heals. And you have the big shield of Indra. Uh, when you are killing enemies, so uh, it's pretty safe. And it's not taking that much turns, in fact. And just in case, you also have the damage immunity proc of Jack and Roll in that team. If you don't have Jack and Roll, maybe you can use another hero instead to protect your heroes. The goal is going to be to play often with your Dianmu, so you can control enemies and one-shot them with your Indra. The first wave is the hardest one normally because as you can see above Indra's head he's starting to get some thunders and then his damage are gonna increase and he's gonna be able to put some thunderstorms on enemies by his own. So you are gonna be able to kill two enemies in one turn on the next wave. Really efficient. And also really important, save your cooldowns at wave transition. Otherwise, you are going to fail on the second wave or the third wave. That's why it's another manual team. Every team I'm showing to you are manual. So this is the next wave and you are going to see that it's even faster than the first one. 50 turns only to clear the first wave though. So Indra one-shot Catherine. So she won't heal enemies. Now I can almost one-shot another enemy. With only two marks, two thunderstorms on him. So just have to repeat, cycle your skills, and one-shot them one by one. Just have a look. My Indra is gonna play, and he's gonna be able to one-shot two other units. Teru first, then he can put more thunderstorms on enemies, and with only two, now he can one-shot a hero. Here, you have some poison, so it's gonna be a bit tweaky. Look at that. It's gonna be close because my Dianmu survived, but if she plays another turn, she is gonna die. So, I'm just gonna use the ultimate, so she won't proc the damage immunity of Jack and Roll. Then I can play two times with my Indra. He is gonna proc the damage immunity of my Jack and Roll, because I'm gonna start the trial. And so I decided to focus Igor first. Now I can one-shot another hero directly, so I, not her because she's gonna proc the damage immunity. But now look at the shield I have on my heroes. The poison of Taph is not gonna kill my guys. And just in case I can cleanse my Dianmu with Fiona. So now I just have to continue like this and the wave is gonna be over super fast. They are controlled all the time. I just have to put on them the thunderstorms and then my Indra is just gonna finish the work. And it's gonna be super fast. 124 turns to clear the tower with that team. So before you ask, this is the buffs I have on my team at the moment. We are on day two. On the first day, I, I just put everything to level 10 and then I'm focusing on that one until it is level 30 because this is my Indra that deals the most amount of damage against the boss of the Broken Land and this is why I wanted to have the level 30 first here and then on the second day I focused on uh, putting everything to level 20. So if you want to know my ultimate well uh, team this is the one I am using in the Weathering Coast the one that deals the highest amount of damage at once. I'm not manualing the fight I don't like that so I'm just keeping the fight and this is what I can have of course if I wanted to have a, a higher score I should um, try just to manual things but at the end of the day doing that every day it's just taking a huge amount of time and I don't want to waste some so I don't care that much if I'm not ranked uh, in the top three of that content but still it's giving to me a lot of damage at, at the end so I really do hope that you enjoyed the video if it's the case as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe have a nice day and see you in the next video and who knows I might try to find a fifth team working in the broken land the next time so 
uh, you will see that in my future videos. Hope you enjoyed the content. Have a nice day and see you soon. Bye bye.